child and gotten a much bigger reaction than you were expecting, or maybe no reaction at all, and then wondered, what does it all mean? Well, Erin Imsland is an occupational therapist at Red Door Pediatric Therapy, and she is joining us this morning to talk about the difference in reaction size. Good morning to you, Erin. Good morning, guys. You know, Erin, we see that a lot. We say something and the reaction is either really big or no reaction at all. Tell us, if you would, what does, what does a kid's reaction really mean? So when we're talking about reaction size, we are talking about the response to a problem, um, the behaviors, the actions, the words that a kid says, or the decisions that they make. And then when we talk about size, we are just trying to find a way to categorize reactions so they make more sense to kids so that they can start to better regulate them. Can you talk to us what, about what some of those categories are and do they apply to maybe a happy reaction or a sad or an angry reaction? It works for all of these different emotions. Definitely. Okay. So typically we talk about them just based on their size. So small, medium, or big is what we usually use for older kids. Um, and then if we have a preschool kid or those early elementary, we might just use small and big to get rid of any confusion. So for example, I have two little nephews and they're three and one, and they have this Maui hook toy from Moana that they love, their most prized possession. <laughs> so the half lights up and the tip is broken off of it but they love it. So it causes lots of problems in their home. Mm -hmm. So a small reaction might look like my older nephew Felix just waiting his turn or asking for help to get a turn or going to play with another toy. A medium reaction might look like him whining and saying like, no, it's my turn. He's been playing with it all day or taking the toy out of his hands without asking. And then the big reaction, which we see a lot because they're three in one, is the everybody's got their hands on the hook. They're pulling and tugging and yelling at each other, hitting each other with it. Mm -hmm. So there you can kind of see the different levels and how they escalate um, based on the kid's ability to cope. Absolutely. Let me ask you this, Erin. Is, is, is the reaction like that, is that something that is learned or is that instinctive from the child? How would, you, how would you categorize that? If it's kids, an overreaction, for example. Yes, so kids need to learn to manage their emotions. Um, some kids are inherently better at it than others, but most kids do need to learn how to have small reactions. So this can be modeled by parents. Um, as grown-ups, we oftentimes don't have reactions that match the size of our problem. Um, and then also our, re our reactions can be reinforced. So when we have, when kids are having small reactions, our parents providing that positive feedback to them? Um, are they, you know, if Felix goes and waits his turn for the hook, is somebody telling him, hey, good job, thanks for doing that, thanks for waiting? Or is he getting more attention and getting what he wants when he fights over the hook with his brother? Mm -hmm. So it's it's very careful, very tricky line for parents mm -hmm. to walk with this, but it's important for us to be aware of it as well. So you talk about helping these kids understand these different sizes of reactions. And do you think that's maybe our first step is we need to get them to be able to identify what's small, medium, and big for a reaction? Totally. And you know, I was on here a while ago and we talked about problem size, mm -hmm. which is important to know but really without reaction size, it doesn't produce the behaviors that we want. So I can know that a problem is small, but if I don't also know that that implies I need to have a small reaction, it's not gonna change my behavior. Mm -hmm. So we need to have that foundation that we know about our problems and about the reactions that are expected with those problems. Well, certainly isn't the sole reason, but I think one of the things that you're hitting on here is how we react as parents or grandparents or whatever is a direct correlation of how we may see that child react as well. Definitely. And I think that, you know, I teach this almost every single day to kids and I can catch my own self being like, okay, what size problem is this that my husband left the dishes in the sink for me to do <laughs> and what size reaction am I going to have about it? 
Um, and that self-talk that I'm able to engage in to regulate my reaction is what we want to facilitate in our kids, which is much harder because they're younger and they don't have as much experience as we do. But that is what we want to model and um, try to produce in them. Okay, and then if you were to take it one step further than just modeling the behavior, do you think it's a good idea to talk about maybe what you're dealing with in your own life? I mean, you know, not to get too big of mm -hmm. situ situations, but just to explain to them, this is a small problem, this is a small reaction, that kind of thing. Yes, and when we teach this initially, I usually tell parents, first, when you go home, talk about it for yourself or talk about it for the sister or the dad because initially if we come at kids and be like you're having a small problem uh -huh. before they understand it they're going to get pretty defensive but if we can think them mom's having a small problem right now or oh look sister just had a really big reaction to that small problem it can get them to that place where they learn it well and then after they've learned it well we can start generalizing it to themselves Sounds great good. tip great yeah. tip all right, Red Door Pediatric Therapy, how can we reach you guys, Erin, to ask more questions? Yes, we are located in Bismarck, Grand Forks, and Minot, and we have one central scheduling line, and that is 701-222-3175. Erin Imslad from Red Door Pediatric Therapy, thank you so much for talking about this. It was very helpful. Thank you, guys. All right, we'll see you later, Erin. Stay with us, North Dakota Today. We'll continue right after this.